Hi. <laughs> it's once again been a couple of weeks since I've uploaded a video, um, but you know, I have been doing things and I know I keep saying that. I will explain it to you all in detail eventually. And by eventually, I mean literally later this month. So you'll know what's going on and why I've been uploading less. I promise, I think it'll be worth it for you. Just thank you for giving me the space and time I've needed to take little breaks here and there. I've been very busy, but we're back. We're talking about some books. <laughs> so it's finally that time of year. And by that time of year, I mean the middle of the year or actually a little bit past the middle of the year. I'm a little bit behind on things. However, it is the middle of the year now. And what does that mean? It means that everyone is filming their mid-year book freakout tags, which is a book tag that's been around for years now. I've done it multiple times, um, but it's been a few years since I've actually done it. And I really love this tag. It's just kind of like a mid-year check-in to give you all updates on the books that I've read so far this year and my thoughts on all of them, what books I plan to read in the second half of the year. And it's just like a bunch of questions so that you all can know how my reading has been going so far this year and I can give you an update and that's what we're gonna do today and I'm very excited about it. I will of course leave links to the original creators videos in the description box below so you can check them out as well as timestamps for each of the questions if you want to jump around but before we get into the tag I do have a couple of like quick announcements that I want to mention. First of all I do want to let you all know that the necklace that I designed with Ana Luisa is back in stock for those of you who have been asking about it. It took a bit. Um, there were some like problems with like warehouse stuff but the necklace is back in stock so if you are interested in purchasing the um, Hannah necklace from Ana Luisa I will leave the link in the description box below you can head straight there and pick one up for yourself if you would like to I know a lot of you messaged me about it um, and I did mention it on Instagram recently but I wanted to let you all know on here as well because I know plenty of you were asking about it so thank you all so much for being so patient while we were trying to get them all back in stock but they are back now so if you would like to get yourself one you can do so and then the second thing I also just quickly wanted to say thank you all for um, the like reaction and response to the necklace in the first place. Um, it sold out in a day which was incredible and unbelievable and um, I am just so overwhelmed and floored and full of so much gratitude for all of you because you send me all of the pictures and messages telling me how much you like it, showing me yourself wearing it and stuff like that and honestly it makes me like tear up every single time because it just makes me so happy to see you all wearing it. It means a lot to me and I'm so glad that you all love it as much as I do and that it means as much to you as it does to me. So yes, I wanted to quickly thank you for that and also let you know about the restock. But without any further ado, let's get into the questions of the tag and find out what's the best book I've read so far this year and the most disappointing book I've read so far this year and everything in between. So, so far this year, I've read a total of 18 books, which is literally double what I read last year, which is incredible for me at this point, honestly, um, considering that I've been busy doing other things and haven't actually had that much time for reading. So 18 books is really nice. I'm very happy with that number. And like I said many times in like previous videos, I've loved everything I've read so far this year. So it's been a great reading year and I'm really hoping to keep up that momentum in the second half of the year as well. But the first question is, what is the best book you've read in 2021 so far? So I'm gonna take this question to mean best, like objectively the best book, not my favorite book I've read so far this year because those would be two different books. Even though I consider this book that I'm gonna mention as one of my favorite books I've ever read and one of my favorite books I've read this year, I just objectively think this is the best book I've read this year, even if it's not necessarily my favorite one because there's a different one that's my favorite one, which I think you can all guess. But in my opinion, and the best book I've read so far this year is On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vong. I've talked about this book in a couple of videos now, I think, um, but it is honestly one of the greatest things I've ever read. <laughs> this book is a letter that a son wrote to his mother who is illiterate, and it's about his experiences and his life growing up as um, gay and Vietnamese American and what that was like, and her life as a Vietnamese immigrant coming to America and what it was like for her and her mother as well. And it's just so beautiful. It's honestly some of the most beautiful prose I've ever read in my entire life. It's heartbreaking, it's really difficult to read at times, but honestly it's one of the best things I've ever read and I thoroughly enjoyed it and I know I'm definitely gonna read plenty more that Ocean Vong writes. I'm very interested in picking up his poetry as well. So yeah, definitely I think this is probably the best book I've read in 2021. Question two is what is the best sequel you've read so far in 2021? And this was a no-brainer for me, such an easy question to answer, and also this I could consider my favorite book that I've read so far this year as well, but that is none other than Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare. No one here is surprised. I'm sure most of you have seen the vlog at this point. It's just like an hour of me crying and losing my mind over this because I loved it so much. Still my favorite 
favorite book I've read so far this year. I've read a lot of really good books, but this was still the most enjoyable reading experience for me because it just made me feel every single emotion. So yeah, definitely my favorite sequel I've read so far this year. I am so excited for the finale of this series. I never want it to come out because I never want this series to end, but also I need it like today because I'm so tired of like having this cliffhanger. I just, I need a resolution. <laughs> Question three is a new release you haven't read yet, but want to. There have definitely been quite a few new releases this year that I have been eyeing and wanting to read, but just haven't had the time or the motivation to pick up yet. But the one that comes to mind right now is One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston, who is the author of Red, White, and Royal Blue. I've mentioned that book multiple times. I read it in 2019, I think, and I really, really enjoyed it. And I've been looking forward to their next book for some time now. So I'm very excited to pick that one up. It just came out recently and I'm very interested to see what I think about it. I feel like I'll definitely enjoy it. I've heard a lot of people say that it's actually better than Red, White, and Royal Blue. I mean, I really like that book. So if it's better than that, I would love this. So yeah, I'm very excited to try that one. Question four is your most anticipated release for the second half of the year. And for me, this is easily, easily the sequel to Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe, which is Aristotle and Dante Dive into the Waters of the World. That title, I'm... <sighs> I'm so excited. If you've been with me from the like start of my channel, you know that Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe is one of my all-time favorite books. I love this book. It is like classic YA literature to me. I love it so much. I think it is so, so good. It is one of the books that got me into reading YA contemporary in general. And Benjamin Elyria Sands, the author, has been teasing like a sequel for years and years now, and we're finally getting one. I believe it comes out in October, and I'm so incredibly excited. I love Ari and Dante. I would die for these two. They are precious to me, and I'm so excited to see their story continue. I'm really hoping that it's good. Usually I don't have that much faith in sequels, but like, like, I'm willing to give this a chance. I'm willing to like be hopeful about it because I just love them so much and like I just I want to be back in that world in their world with these characters that I love so deeply. So yeah I'm so excited for this book. I had no idea that it was coming out this year so when I found out about it I was over the moon and I just I can't wait to have my hands on it. Question five is your biggest disappointment. So I have two for this actually. First up we have King of Crows by Libba Bray, the finale to the Diviners series. I've mentioned this book in a video before I think and mentioned that it was wasn't my favorite in the series. I think it was kind of a bit of a letdown for a series finale. It was by no means bad. I did enjoy the book. I think I gave it three stars, like a solid good read, and I enjoyed it, but it just didn't live up to the rest of the books in the series, in my opinion, and it was too long. I think that's my main criticism of it. It was just way too long. It was just like not what I wanted it to be. I expected a bit more from this. So again, not a bad book by any means. I still highly recommend the series. I really enjoy the whole series, but just not exactly what I wanted it to be. And then the second book I have to mention shouldn't come as a surprise either because I also talked about this in another video. I've talked about most of these books in other videos. I haven't read that much this year so you'll hear me repeat myself multiple times but that book is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. Again, I want to preface this with I gave this book four stars. I did genuinely enjoy this book. I don't want you all to think I like hate it or something. I don't. I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good book. I just do not see it as like exceptional the way that everyone else does and it just didn't live up to my hype that I'd built up for it in my head. I thought I would die for this book. Like I thought I'd be head over heels in love with this story and it would be one of my new all-time favorite books and it just wasn't so it was disappointing to me. <laughs> Again, it's still a good book. I still think it's worth reading. I think it was enjoyable, but in my opinion, it's not really anything special and in my opinion, Victoria Schwab has much better books. That's just how I feel personally. Um, so I was a little bit disappointed by this one. So yeah, this one and King of Crows are definitely um, the two that have been the most disappointing. But again, a three and four star book. Like, I've still read great books. I haven't read anything less than three stars so far this year. Who knows, maybe second half of the year I'll read some really terrible books. Maybe I'll read some terrible books for fun and then we can vlog that. Who knows? Leave recommendations for really bad books and maybe I'll read some of them. All right, question six is biggest surprise. And for me, this easily goes to my reread of the entire Shadow and Bone trilogy. I filmed a whole reading vlog when I was rereading this trilogy and it was honestly one of my favorite videos I've made so far this year because it was really, really fun for me. I'd never read Ruin and Rising before, but I'd read the first two years and years ago, but I just didn't really care that much about the series. I thought it was three stars, just okay, good, but like not my favorite thing. And then I reread them this year, right before the show came out because I wanted to prepare and I love them now. Like, I literally love this series. I would call this one of my favorite series. It's genuinely such a good series. I was so taken aback by how much my opinion on it had changed, and it's definitely made me want to go back and reread a bunch of other series to see how my opinions have changed on them now, like, 
four or five years later. So yeah, hands down, this has to be the biggest surprise for me because I genuinely did not think I'd ever come around to loving this book series as much as I do now. But I'm so pleasantly surprised by it. It's a good surprise, very happy surprise. <laughs> Question seven is your favorite new author. And for this, I definitely also have to go with Ocean Vong. Uh, like I mentioned before, I loved this book so much that I definitely plan to pick up his poetry books as well because I feel like I will absolutely love anything that he writes. Definitely a new favorite author for me, like an auto buy author. Okay, questions eight and nine are new fictional crush and new favorite character. And quite honestly, I don't think I have one for either of those because every single one of my new favorite fictional characters or fictional crushes is, has just come from anime this past year. <laughs> I don't think I have a new like fictional crush or favorite character in a book. I guess you could count Mal from Shadow and Bone. Mal and Alina, like the two of them, I like love them. I love their relationship. Their relationship is my fictional crush. I guess we could pick that. And they're like two of my new favorite characters. So we'll go with Mal and Alina, actually. I think that's a pretty fair answer. Question 10 is a book that made you cry. And I could go with like a number of books because a lot of the books I read this year made me cry, some of which you have witnessed on camera. But I'm gonna pick two that I haven't mentioned in this video yet. And the first one is The Stationery Shop. I've mentioned this book in a couple of other videos before, I think. And I have talked about how much I love it. It's definitely one of my new favorite books I've read. I genuinely enjoyed this book so much and it definitely made me cry. It was heart-wrenching and just very, very emotional for me. <laughs> it's basically like historical fiction romance and I don't know what it is about that genre specifically, like a story that takes place over like a very long span of time that really gets to me. I think it's just getting to see characters' entire like lifespans or life stories like play out over time really gets to me in some way. It's like that and found family are like the two tropes that really make me like lose it emotionally. <laughs> and the stationery shop is very much that, like it starts in the 50s and then we move on to like 2013 so it takes place like throughout all of that time and so we really get to grow with these characters and see how they change and what happens to them in their lives and it's beautiful and it's so emotional everyone should read this book it's so good <laughs> And then the other book that made me cry, which has a very similar plot structure, is uh, Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I finally read Malibu Rising. It just came out like last month or something like that. And it took me a bit to pick it up, but I just finished it like yesterday and I loved it. <laughs> I'll talk about it some more in like a wrap up once I've read some more books and I'll like wrap up some of the other books that I've read recently for you all. But um, I did very much enjoy this book and it did make me cry. I definitely do not like it as much as I like Daisy Jones or Evelyn Hugo. Those two are like gone tier books for me. This was like four stars and really great, but just not as great as those two. I do think it's more similar to her other books. I've read her entire backlist, so um, I've read like all of her other romance books as well before Daisy Jones and Evelyn Hugo, and um, I really like those two, and I think this book is more similar to that, even though it has the same kind of structure as Evelyn Hugo and Daisy Jones, where it's about these like fictional celebrities in this fictional Taylor Jenkins Reid celebrity universe. <laughs> but this did make me cry because of the sibling relationships, which is like the core part of this story and the like commentary on like family and stuff, um, which was again like the main aspect of this. And it was very emotional. Um, I really enjoyed it though. It was a great read, highly recommend. Taylor Jenkins read never lets me down. She never disappoints. So yeah, these two books definitely made me cry. But like I said, a lot of books make me cry. I cry very easily. Now in contrast, question 11 is a book that made you happy. See, books that made me cry can also be books that made me happy. Um, those two things are like kind of interchangeable. Sometimes I cry from sheer happiness and I did tear up a little bit in this book from sheer happiness, um, but this is definitely a book that I would say made me happy, and that is The House in the Cerulean Sea. I've mentioned this book multiple times on my channel now as well. I love it. It's so good. It is so happy, and it's also sad, of course, like I said, but at the same time, it's mostly just like a purely happy book. If you're looking for something to just like cheer you up, something to like escape into for a little while, this is definitely the book that I would recommend. It's really heartwarming, and it will definitely put a smile on your face. All right, and then the next question is the most beautiful book you have either bought or received this year. And for me, this hands down has to go to the collector's edition of Clockwork Angel or the 10th anniversary edition, not collector's edition. The 10th anniversary edition. I love this book. It is one of the few books I've actually bought this year. I really haven't bought that many books this year, but I love this edition. I saw it and I was like, I need it. I know I already have a copy of Clockwork Angel, but I want this one because it's so pretty and this is like my favorite series. So yes, I'm very happy to have this. I do want like the other pretty editions of the, um, what's it, what are they called? What is Chain of Gold called? The Last Hours. Oh my god, that took me so long. <laughs> I do want the pretty collector's editions of the Last Hour series, like the Waterstones ones. They're so nice, um, but I did not buy them when they first came out, and now they're like $300 on um, Depop or like eBay or something like that, so... 
I'm not paying that much money for a book, but <laughs> I do want them. Maybe one day I'll get them, who knows? Uh, but yeah, I love these pretty like hardback cloth bound like foil books. They're very pretty. They're making them for so many books now. Like they're making so many books with these like editions. And I know there are so many subscription boxes that do like all these special fancy editions. And I've mentioned this before, I used to be way more into like pretty editions of books and I've recently like kind of gotten out of that. But every now and then, every now and then when I see one, I'm like, yeah, I could, I could have that. That would make me happy. So I caved with this one and got it. <laughs> and finally, question 13, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? So I have quite a few books that I still need to read by the end of the year. There's one that is definitely the most important. I'm gonna list a couple of them and then I think you'll all know what the number one book is. <laughs> First off, I definitely wanna read King of Scars. Um, I need to continue on with like, the Grisha trilogy and go back into the Grisha world because I have been spoiled now at this point, thanks to some people, um, for this series and I kind of know what happens. So like I need to read them um, as soon as possible. So this is definitely high up on my priority list of books that I need to get to and I'm thinking about filming a vlog for it like I've mentioned before. So might be doing that. And then another series that I really need to read by the end of the year. I mentioned this in my last video um, as well that I started like reading manga and I've gotten super into manga. Specifically, I've gotten really, really into Fruits Basket and it has consumed my entire life my entity, my whole soul now belongs to Fruits Basket. Literally no thoughts, head empty, just Fruits Basket. There's nothing else up here. I've watched the show four times at this point. Yes, I did finish it. Yes, I did start rewatching it immediately after I finished it. I've shown it to literally everyone in my life and I'm like, you all need to watch this. It's the greatest thing I've ever seen. My life's mission is to now make everybody in the world watch Fruits Basket because it's my favorite thing on earth. I literally posted on my Instagram story the other day about how I think Fruits Basket might literally top Avatar The Last Airbender as like my favorite show of all time. I know that's a controversial statement. Um, I know that I never thought anything would ever come even close to Avatar for me, but I'm telling y'all, Fruits Basket is it. Fruits Basket, it's consumed me, okay? I could make an entire video just about why I like this series so much. Or maybe I will just vlog myself reading the entire manga series. But to get back to the point, the Fruits Basket manga. That's one thing I need to read before the end of the year. I have volume one and volume five. Those are the only two volumes I have. Um, I do need to buy the other volumes as well, but maybe when I do that, I'll just vlog myself reading this entire series. Maybe that's what I'll do. That, that could be something. Let me know if you all would be interested in seeing that because the only thing I'm interested in doing anymore is talking about Fruits Basket. I've annoyed so many of my friends, but annoyed them into watching it. And now they're like, thank you, Hannah, for introducing me to most depressing yet best thing I've ever seen. And I'm like, you're welcome because it's the greatest thing ever. <laughs> anyway, um, I don't know how to explain to you all how obsessed I am with Fruits Basket. Like when I say consumed me, I mean like fully consumed me. Like I literally cannot think about anything else. I do not love anything the way I love this. Um, so yes, I need to read the entire manga series ASAP. It's so important. Uh, my life depends on this. <laughs> So yeah, um, that's one thing I will definitely be doing within like the next month or so because yes, um, I love this series with my whole heart and soul. Read it, watch it, let it consume you. Let it consume you and then come back to me and you can thank me and we can cry together because I will never stop crying about Fruits Basket. <laughs> and then last but certainly not least, we have the book that everyone has been begging me to read for like two years now. I know, <laughs> but, but you'll all be very happy to know that this is the next book I plan to read and I'm vlogging it. So it'll, it'll happen. It's coming. The vlog is coming. You'll finally get to hear my thoughts on this book. And that is of course, none other than The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. I know it's been a million years. I know you've all been asking for me to read it for so, so long, but I'm finally doing it. Um, literally, actually finally doing it. I'm probably starting this either tomorrow or the day after, whenever I finally have time, but it is literally the next book I will read. I promise you that. You can yell at me for the rest of time if I don't read this next, I promise, okay? <laughs> okay, and I will vlog it so you can see my whole reaction and my whole like reading experience of it, like you've all been asking me to do since it came out in like 2019. It's fine, it's fine, we're doing it. <laughs> but yes, um, I will read this. This will definitely be read by the end of the year. This will be read probably by the end of the month, so. I'm sticking to my word now, okay? I'm sticking to my promise. I will keep my promise. But there you all have it. That is it for the mid-year book freakout tag. I hope you all enjoyed watching this video. I hope that it was fun for you to hear about the books I've read so far this year and the books I plan to read for the remainder of the year. And I hope your reading year has been going well as well. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite book and your most disappointing book that you've read so far this year have been. I'm very curious to know. Also, um, if you do want to see any of those reading vlogs and stuff that I mentioned or videos that I mentioned, definitely let me know that as well. But that is it for this 
this video. If you'd like to follow me on any of my social media, all of my links are in the description box as always. But thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye! Thank <music> you.